Well, if being very independent and being rebellious against the established positions of your party or, or, or the institution when you think they're dead wrong is being a rebel, then I'm a rebel. But on very key, important issues, when I felt the party was wrong, I have spoken out. And uh, I guess some people think that's rebellious. I think that's in the great American tradition. I think it's the great New Hampshire tradition, frankly, of Daniel Webster. From bravely defending our nation as a Marine in Korea, to standing up for the citizens of New Hampshire as our Attorney General, to his storied leadership for our state and our country as a senator and statesman, Warren Rudman put his heart and soul, his sweat and blood and tears into our great nation. I think he has enormous respect for the profession of the law. It is something that, because he did it at night while he was running his, his father's company and he had to drive to BC law school every night, it means a lot because he had to work hard to get into that profession. He served in the military, he was helping his family, his business, and, and he was doing law school at night. He had to really work to get into this profession. And I think he has enormous regard for the law as a force which orders society and which is somehow greater than those who practice it. Warren Rudman was really the model for attorneys general. He professionalized the office of the attorney general in a way that had never been done before. He was involved in critical issues. He even tried cases personally. He was the kind of attorney general that made the people of New Hampshire proud because he got involved, stayed involved, and pursued justice at every level. I, I think most folks who were in the state who followed the course of that office would say that Warren Rudman completely changed not just the personnel in the AG's office, but what the AG's office did and how it was perceived in the state. And I think it was very much Warren's drive and Warren's initiative and energy that he said, I want to have not just a large group of people working in the state, I want to have the best law firm in the state. The New Hampshire long haul truckers got together and they decided to protest uh, the gasoline prices. And what they were going to do was encircle the state house, the New Hampshire state house, with their semis and their trailers and just basically stop state government. Now, Warren had been suffering, as he was periodically in the mid-70s, from some remnants of, some of his time in combat. On the great morning, Warren appeared in the office with a cervical collar up to about here. And I know he was really in quite a bit of pain. And as we were running down the stairs to go out there, I said, what are you going to say to them? What are you going to do? He said, I'm going to tell them to move the trucks. And I remember him ripping off the neck brace. The spokesman for the, for the truckers was, was standing making his statement about gas prices and Warren walked up to him until uh, he was about one inch from the guy's face. And then Warren let him have it. He said, I've got the state police and the National Guard waiting over on Concord Heights. And if you don't start moving these trucks out of here, starting right now, I'm going to give them the signal to come across the river. And they're going to come across the river with earth-moving equipment and, and heavy equipment. And they're going to pull every one of these trucks over to the banks of the Merrimack River, and they're going to dump them in. <laughs> the trucks moved. Warren went back to the office, put his cervical collar back on, went home. I think he's the greatest Republican I've ever known. They're going to put that on They're television. Gonna, that's all right. I'm, I'm, that I don't mind saying that. I don't know. It may hurt you. That's yeah. why I say it more. I'm for him. Warren is a conservative in the, in the tradition, uh, I would say, of Teddy Roosevelt, uh, of someone who carries uh, a very big stick and, and walks pretty softly. Although not that soft, they take it back. He makes a pretty uh, loud noise when he walks. If he doesn't agree with it or if he thinks he has to compromise too much, then all bets are off. In the key responsibilities that I've had in this place, where you could play a lot of politics. Iran-Contra, one. The Senate Ethics Committee, two. I have never played politics. 
Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North listened more today than he talked. Members of the Iran-Contra committees took up most of the former White House aide's fifth day. Among the strongest words were those from Republican Senator Warren Rudman of New Hampshire. The American people have the constitutional right to be wrong. And what Ronald Reagan thinks or what Oliver North thinks or what I think or what anybody else thinks makes not a whit if the American people say enough. The Congress has become very partisan. Uh, we've had a gridlock, the likes of which I don't think we've seen, in the, certainly in the post-war period, maybe never in this century. To try to determine whether to spend another six years of my life in this place with so many fine and wonderful people, is, is it worth it? Can you do anything? Can you accomplish anything? Can you make the country better? With the brilliance, with the goodwill, with the good sense, could we not all come together finally and say, it is time to do something for America and stop this politics as usual, which is tearing the country apart and ruining it at the same time? I feel mixed emotions this morning. But there comes a time that everybody ought to come home. And, uh, this is my time, because frankly, although I am not discouraged beyond repair, I am terribly frustrated. I thank the people of this state for giving me an unbelievable opportunity to serve. The two political parties are unable uh, to truly speak the truth because the American people, frankly, uh, don't want to hear it because they don't understand it. And what this government is doing because it tolerates this intolerable situation of a deficit is it's making not just our lives, but more importantly, what it's going to do to our children and their lives is going to make it worse. What we are doing is saddling our children with debt, and that debt, although it does not have to be repaid itself, the interest must be paid. It will soon be over $200 billion. The largest interest group in this country <clears throat> is very underrepresented. Those are the working people of this country. Uh, I refer to them uh, sometimes a little uh, uh, whimsically as the uh, AAWP, the American Association of Working People. Now, I think they ought to have some influence here. The best advice I can give, and I give it to young people when I speak to them, they say, you know, I'd like to have a career in politics, what's your advice? And I say, look, go out and get some real world experience. I mean, just don't become a professional politician and get out of college and, and work for something on the hill and run for something and eventually end up at the age of 55 having done nothing but government, because government doesn't produce anything, it's the system that produces things. So do something. Have a set of values. Know who you are. Know what you believe. Because if you get there and you don't know that, it's too late. More and more Americans are growing discouraged with Washington, D.C. They're afraid that it isn't connected to them and their lives and seeking answers. Uh, Warren Rudman sought answers every day. He was always in combat, to quote the title of his book, and he was always fighting for the people of New Hampshire. And that makes him the kind of role model that law students should know about. The Warren B. Rudman Center seeks to fill a critical gap in legal education. Much of the debate currently has centered around the importance of providing law school students with practical skills training, whether in the clinical setting or putting them out in the real world in an extern or internship placement. But what's missing from the debate is how can law schools do a better job at training future leaders? How can we provide them the skill set that they need to understand how to make principal decisions, how to use their law degree to become effective and zealous advocates? This center seeks to produce such leaders. We need this country, uh, I would say more than ever before. People who are committed exactly the way Warren Rudman was, with the desire to serve, with the desire to do good public policy, with the desire to fight for justice, with the desire to lead the country in the direction of his belief and of his values, both of which were sound and good.
Senator Rudman's legacy is one of cooperation, fiscal responsibility, bipartisanship. But it's clear that what motivated his leadership and public service ran far deeper than those qualities. As we watched him and we listened to him, he brought out the best instincts that, that were in us, whatever they were, including the instinct to, to laugh at yourself every once in a while. And we couldn't fail to understand that Warren Rudman followed Theodore Roosevelt in believing that the most powerful politics is the politics of decency. So what you have to do is, you know, when the day ends, you have to realize who you are, where you come from, what your roots are, and most important, you have to remember that you're only here for a blink of time.